Welcome to the AICP course series presented by FELT. In this comprehensive program, we delve into the intricate world of urban spatial analysis, unlocking the power of FELT and QGIS to transform the way we understand and shape our cities. Hi, I'm Kopal Gora, Manager for Urban Planning and Community Development at FELT. With a passion for urban design and a wealth of experience spanning the UK, US, and Latin America, I'm excited to guide you through this transformative journey. In this course series, we'll embark on a three-part exploration, beginning with an in-depth look at existing conditions assessment using FELT. From there, we'll dive into the world of multi-layer and statistical analysis in QGIs equipping you with the tools to extract meaningful insights from complex urban data. But we don't stop there. We'll bridge the gap between QGIS and FELT, showing you how to leverage online maps for collaborative and easy sharing, revolutionizing the way you communicate and engage with stakeholders. Whether you're a seasoned urban planner or just beginning your journey in the field, this course series offers invaluable insights and practical skills to enhance your expertise and drive positive change in communities worldwide. Join us on this journey as we unlock the potential of urban spatial analysis with FELT and QES. Let's shape the cities of tomorrow together. Welcome to part one of our AICP course series presented by FELT. Module one introduces you to the fundamentals of ECA laying the groundwork for understanding the complexities of urban environments and the potential for development. Module 2 focuses on applying ECA techniques specifically to assess the potential for development in community redevelopment areas. In Module 3, we explore the critical process of data gathering and visualizing in felt, empowering you to transform raw data into actionable insights. Module 4 gets you through data exploration and analysis where we will delve into techniques for uncovering hidden patterns and trends within urban data. And finally, in Module 5, we will focus on mastering existing conditions assessment analysis in urban planning, equipping you with the skills to conduct true assessment that drive informed decision making. Join us in part one of our course series as we unlock the power of existing conditions assessment using FELT. Let's start by understanding what's an existing conditions assessment. Existing conditions assessment, or ECA, serves as the compass of urban planning. It's about understanding where you are, establishing the groundwork before charting a course for the future. ECA meticulously explores the intricacies of the present urban environment, analyzing essential factors like socioeconomic, demographic, and physical elements. It serves as a targeted exploration providing the necessary information to comprehend the existing conditions and tailor insights based on specific criteria. This assessment not only tells us where we are, but directs our attention to what needs consideration. It's a crucial guide for planners, outlining the key elements that demand attention in the complex landscape of urban planning. It serves as a guide to validate or challenge initial perceptions about a location. Picture it as a beacon illuminating intricate details, providing a comprehensive understanding, and establishing a foundation for well-informed decision-making. In urban planning, familiarity with allocation can be misleading. ECA acts as a spotlight, revealing nuanced details and allowing planners to build arguments on a solid foundation. It's not just about confirming understanding, it's about ensuring decisions are grounded in a true and defendable analysis. For those unfamiliar with allocation, existing conditions assessment acts as a compass, providing a systematic approach to understanding the landscape. It's the tool that helps planners discern the nuance, identify opportunities, and navigate challenges with precision. Assessment begins with understanding your context and study area. This may vary, emphasizing the importance of contextual awareness. Consider the broader scale and scope of your study area, deciphering its character, be it commercial, residential, or other facets. Understand zoning, both existing and future, the transportation network, and general value trends to grasp the larger picture. 
Define the information to analyze based on each scale. For broader scales, aim for more general information that paints a comprehensive picture. Understand the character of the area, zoning regulations and overarching trends. Zooming into the study area, take a layers of information to delve into more detail. This may include specific zoning, land values, proximity to major roads or transportation corridors, among other factors. Let's start by understanding what a Community Redevelopment Area, or CRA, is. These areas often face challenges like substandard structures, a shortage of affordable housing, inadequate infrastructure, insufficient roadways, and inadequate parking. CRAs serve as targeted zones where local governments can implement redevelopment initiatives. Now the question arises, why assess development potential in CRAs? The answer lies in ensuring that the development is not just a transformation, but a well-planned response to existing conditions and opportunities. This assessment can also inform private development initiatives, guiding them towards aligning with community needs and objectives. In the context of development, the emphasis shifts towards strategic planning. The goal is to ensure that new developments are not just responsive to existing conditions and opportunities, but are also aligned with community priorities. For public authorities, this involves promoting initiatives that serve the broader goals of the community and determining where the priorities lie. Our journey begins by understanding Cape Coral at a high level. We will unravel different layers, exploring transportation networks, zoning regulations, land value and use, and demographics. This holistic approach allows us to establish a comprehensive understanding of the landscape and identify key factors influencing the potential for development. With a high-level understanding of Cape Coral, we narrow our focus to the specific study area. This targeted zone aligns with the extent of the community redevelopment areas, shaping our analysis within the boundaries set by the CRAs. As we navigate this phase, our attention turns to specific layers critical for redevelopment planning within the CRA areas. All you need? Transportation dynamics, specific zoning designations, land use patterns, and demographic considerations will be scrutinized to discern the unique characteristics of the study area. In Module 3, our focus will be on data gathering, a crucial step in our analysis process. We will begin by accessing GIS data from the U.S. Census, a cornerstone source for demographic and geographic information. Next, we will gather data from Lee County, followed by the City of Cape Coral, to further enrich our understanding of the study areas. Finally, we will utilize the Felt Layer Library to access additional layers and information, enhancing the depth of our analyses. This comprehensive approach to data gathering forms the foundation of our study, ensuring the accuracy and reliability of our findings. Let's begin with census data. This data is fundamental, and we access it through the National Historical Geographic Information System. It provides a user-friendly interface for navigating census data. Utilize advanced search options to customize your queries based on geographic locations and demographic factors extracting precise information for our assessment. Please note that all shapefiles corresponding to Florida data are attached in the description as well. Now let's focus on obtaining data from Lee County. We will access the Lee County GIS portal for this purpose. This interactive mapping platform enables users to explore various datasets. We will gather data on zoning, land use, and other relevant factors. Utilize the search functionalities to locate specific information essential for your existing conditions assessment. Please note that files and links are included in the description as well. And now, similar to the Lee County portal to obtain data for Cape Coral, you will need to access the Cape GIS Open Data Portal. This portal offers a wealth of geospatial information ranging from land use to infrastructure. The next step is to construct or map in felt, integrating all pertinent layers. Adding a layer is quite straightforward. You can drag and drop the file directly onto the map. Alternatively, you can add a layer directly from a server by copying the URL and pasting it into a new felt map. 
the platform will automatically recognize the layer's geospatial data. To proceed with the next steps, please drag and drop all files included in the folder provided in the description. To access files from Felt's library, you'll need to navigate to the appropriate section and select the desired layers. In this instance, we will be adding the parks layer to our map. Furthermore, Felt offers extensive versatility, enabling users to integrate various elements like links and images directly onto the map. This functionality is invaluable for contextualizing data or referencing external sources, thereby enhancing the map's utility for analysis and interpretation. Once all the layers are added, the map will resemble what you see here. To ensure proper organization, simply drag each layer to its designated place. Now let's take a look at our final map. You'll notice that we've meticulously styled all layers for easy visualization and analysis in the next step. Felt, like other GIS software, allows for quick visualization of spatial data. You can visualize points, lines, polygons, and even rasters in various ways. What makes Felt unique is how quickly layers are updated and the array of other collaborative mapping tools that we will explore throughout this course. Replicating these styles is straightforward. You can easily review each layer's settings individually. For example, we've applied a categorical style to major roads using a specific field for this purpose. We've also incorporated labels for clarity, which can be added here. You also have the option to duplicate the map here so you can follow the following modules using the exact same map. Furthermore, if you are seeking further details on styling options, please visit our YouTube channel where you will find a wealth of educational content. The link is provided in the description. Summarizing our previous steps, we gathered data from various sources, including NHGIS, Lee County, Cape Coral City, and Felt's Library for the local parks. Now, our next task is to examine each layer and understand the information it provides for the city and our study area. As discussed in Module 2, our study area comprises the CRA, Community Redevelopment Agency areas in Cape Coral. These areas often face challenges such as substandard structures, a shortage of affordable housing, inadequate infrastructure, insufficient roadways, and inadequate parking. CRAs serve as targeted zones where local governments can implement redevelopment initiatives. Therefore, conducting an existing conditions assessment, ECA analysis in these areas, is crucial for making informed decisions regarding further developments and prioritizing areas for development. Let's begin by examining census data for Cape Coral. The city predominantly comprises single-story houses, contributing to a low-density urban fabric with a spacious layout. Moving south of any Pine Island Road, the population density increases, reaching an average of over 20 inhabitants per hectare. This densification is particularly noticeable along major roads within this quadrant, such as Country Club Boulevard and Chiquita Boulevard. Peaks of density are observed near Cape Coral Parkway, east and the north of Cultural Park Boulevard, ranging from 30 to 40 inhabitants per hectare. Despite predominantly featuring two to three-story buildings, the sites are smaller and fully developed, resulting in a denser environment, even though most of the structures have only one story. Regarding zoning designations, the predominant land use within the city is residential, featuring primarily single-family homes. Commercial activities are strategically located along key roads, creating a mixed-use uh, dynamic. Multifamily developments are concentrated near commercial areas and along major thoroughfares, enhancing the diversity of the urban fabric. Institutional land uses are scattered throughout the city, presenting a varied distribution with no discernible pattern. These areas serve various public functions but lack a clear organizational structure in terms of their location within the city. A notable commercial corridor unfolds along Pine Island Road, traversing the city and evolving into the most significant commercial zone in zoning terms for Cape Coral. This corridor serves as a focal point for commercial activities contributing significantly to the economic landscape of the city. 
sizable preservation areas characterize the western and southern regions of the city, enveloping the Caloosahatchee River and McArdle Island Preserve. These expansive green spaces not only contribute to the city's environmental richness, but also provide a natural buffer, enhancing the overall quality of life for residents. Regarding transportation, we've collected data on three key layers, major roads, bike routes, and bus stops. On major roads, a notable observation is the strategic alignment of bridges connecting Cape Coral to Fort Myers with major or principal arterials, ensuring seamless connectivity for efficient transportation between the two cities. One noteworthy route is Colonial Way, which originates in Fort Myers and spans the river, transforming into Veterans Memorial Parkway within Cape Coral. This thoroughfare traverses the city, extending northward and transitioning into Burnstore Road. This transition marks a crucial link that not only facilitates local transportation within Cape Coral, but also serves as a key connection point for travelers heading to northern cities such as Sarasota and St. Petersburg. The integration of these roadways and bridges contributes to a well-connected transportation network enhancing regional accessibility and facilitating travel to and from Cape Coral. Public transport infrastructure, including bus stops, is concentrated primarily to the south of Pine Island Road. The bus routes extend from the northern to southern parts of the city with a focus on Cape Coral Parkway. This central route serves as a key connection to the southern bridge leading to Fort Myers, enhancing public transportation options for residents. The city's bike lanes are strategically aligned with major roads, transforming into multimodal corridors that provide connectivity across the city. These bike lanes predominantly follow the routes of major roads, extending to the boundaries of the city and promoting a bicycle-friendly environment. And now comes parcels. The majority of parcels within Cape Coral feature relatively small sizes typically less than 2,000 square meters, with a significant portion falling within the range of 1,000 square meters or less. This pattern aligns with the prevalent land use of single-family parcels, reflecting the common arrangement of smaller lots in residential areas. As one approaches more significant roads, the parcel sizes tend to increase. Parcels ranging from 2,000 to 5,000 square meters are commonly found near roads of medium importance, while those adjacent to more vital thoroughfares can extend from 5,000 to 10,000. Larger plots exceeding one hectare are typically situated on the outskirts of the city or adjacent to major corridors like Pine Island Road, showcasing a hierarchical distribution of parcel sizes based on road importance. Within our study area, the Community Redevelopment Area CRAs, we observe similar patterns in parcel sizes. The majority of parcels are below 2,000 square meters, aligning with the citywide trend of smaller lots, often around 1,000 or less. This reflects the predominant land use of single-family parcels in the CRAs. Notably, there is a concentration of larger parcels adjacent to the major road in the area Cape Coral Parkway. Parcel sizes in this vicinity typically range from 2,000 to 5,000 square meters, with only a few exceeding 5,000. An exception to this trend is a notably larger site situated to the north of the area spanning more than 70 hectares. This larger site stands out as an exception to the general parcel size distribution within the CRAs. Regarding land value, when examining land prices in terms of dollars per square meter, a consistent pattern emerges throughout Cape Coral. Across the city, there is a relatively uniform land price ranging from $1 to $100 per square meter, with slight fluctuations for properties located near medium and major roads. However, a notable change occurs as one approaches the Calusa Hachi River and the McCarley Island Preserve areas. Proximity to the water is associated with higher land prices, ranging from $200 per square meter to over $400. This trend is particularly pronounced in the southern area, 
characterized by small residential parcels offering direct access to the water and bridges connecting to Fort Myers. Within our study area, the Community Redevelopment Areas, CRAs, we observe a similar trend of higher land values near the bridges and areas with direct waterfront access. This trend mirrors the broader citywide pattern and underscores the influence of proximity to water bodies on land values within the CRAs. And finally, regarding local parks, there is a notable discrepancy in access to open spaces, both citywide in Cape Coral and within the study area, CRAs. While smaller pocket parks are present, they tend to be relatively small and lack the vibrancy observed in more successful public spaces. Interestingly, some of the most successful public spaces share a common characteristic, access to water. These spaces, often larger in size, of higher quality and more popular, stand out as examples of well-utilized areas within the city. This pattern underscores the significance of water features in enhancing the attractiveness and vitality of public spaces, both in the broader city context and specifically within the CRAs. Now, in Module 5, we conclude Part 1 of our journey. We will now explore the three lessons covered during this part of the course. These lessons will delve into essential topics, such as the role of existing conditions assessment, ECA, integrating data for holistic insights, and leveraging insights for strategic planning. Lesson number one is about understanding the role of existing conditions assessment. The creation of an existing conditions assessment, ECA, goes beyond merely assembling geographic features. It serves as the foundation of our analysis. By amalgamating data from various sources, the ECA offers a spatial framework that enhances our comprehension of community dynamics. Lesson number two is about gaining holistic insights. Having delved into the intricacies of our map, we've embarked on the journey of navigating and integrating diverse layers onto this foundational canvas. Our exploration has encompassed a wide array of data, from demographic insights to land use patterns, with each layer adding depth to our understanding of the landscape. We've unraveled the process of visualizing and interpreting these layers, extracting valuable insights to inform our analysis comprehensively. And finally, lesson number three is about leveraging insights for strategic planning. In summarizing our comprehensive analysis of Cape Coral's existing conditions, we've delved into various facets crucial for understanding the city's dynamics. Firstly, examining density revealed distinct patterns across different areas of the city, with denser populations clustered around major roads and water bodies. In terms of transportation, the strategic alignment of bridges and roadways underscores the city's connectivity and accessibility, facilitating efficient travel within Cape Coral and to neighboring cities. Zoning designations shed light on the predominant land uses within the city, with residential areas dominating the landscape, complemented by commercial zones and institutional spaces. Parcel size distribution reflects a hierarchical pattern with smaller lots prevalent in residential areas and larger plots typically found near major roads. Land value analysis highlights the influence of proximity to water bodies on property prices, with waterfront areas commanding higher values. Lastly, the examination of local parks underscores the significance of water features in enhancing the attractiveness and vitality of public spaces emphasizing the importance of access to open green spaces for community well-being. In conclusion, this comprehensive assessment serves as the foundation for informed decision-making and strategic planning initiatives aimed at addressing the diverse needs and challenges of Cape Coral's um, communities. By understanding the intricate interplay of various factors shaping the city's landscape, we're better equipped to chart a course towards sustainable growth and development that prioritizes the well-being and prosperity of its residents. This comprehensive analysis facilitated by this visual representation serves as a compass for decision-making, paving the way for strategic plans and targeted interventions. 
armed with a profound understanding of the existing conditions gleaned from our analysis, we're poised to embark on the next phase of our journey towards informed and effective urban planning. Many thanks for being here on part one, existing conditions assessment using felt. Now let's continue with our journey with part two, multi-layer and statistical analysis in QGIS. Here we will delve deeper into advanced spatial analysis techniques and harness the power of QGIS for insightful decision making. Welcome to part two of our AICP course series, Multi-Layer and Statistical Analysis in QGIS. In this module, we'll explore how QGIS enables sophisticated analytical capabilities for urban planning professionals. Module one provides an introduction to multi-layer and statistical analysis in urban planning, setting the stage for understanding the depth and breadth of analytical possibilities. Module 2 focuses on defining analytical questions, a crucial step in ensuring that our analysis aligns with the objectives of urban planning projects. In Module 3, we delve into total vacant land analysis, demonstrating how QGIS empowers planners to identify, leverage, and utilize spaces within urban areas. Module 4 explores the categorization and visualization of land use criteria, equipping you with the tools to communicate complex land use patterns effectively. Join us in Part 2 of our course series as we harness the analytical power of QGIS for urban planning. Let's unlock insights that drive meaningful change in our cities. Let's start with Module 1, Introduction to Multilayer and Statistical Analysis. Our journey begins with an exploration of the capabilities offered by QGIS, an open source geographic information system. It serves as a powerful tool for spatial analysis and mapping, providing planners with a range of tools for various types of work. Throughout this course, we'll delve into some of its key features, including how to filter data, create new layers, utilize the attribute table for calculations, generating isochrones, performing overlap analysis and conducting statistical analysis for selected areas. A multi-layered analysis in urban planning is essential due to the intricate nature of urban environments. Cities are dynamic ecosystems comprising interconnected elements, such as demographics, land use, transportation networks, environmental factors, and socioeconomic dynamics. Understanding urban complexities requires a comprehensive examination of these layers. Each layer provides unique insights, with spatial analysis revealing patterns and relationships crucial for decision-making. For example, demographic data reveals population distribution and growth trends, impacting housing demands and infrastructure needs. Land use patterns identify areas for development, conservation, or potential redevelopment. Transportation networks illustrate connectivity, accessibility, and traffic flow, affecting resident mobility. Through multi-layered analysis, planners uncover synergies, trade-offs, and opportunities not evident when analyzing individual layers. This holistic approach facilitates the formulation of integrated and sustainable urban development strategies tailored to community needs. Ultimately, multi-layered analysis empowers planners to navigate modern city complexities fostering resilient, inclusive, and livable urban environments for current and future generations. As we refine our focus from the broader context established earlier, our primary objective is to formulate precise questions that surpass mere contextualization. Our analytical journey begins with defining these questions, which will guide our exploration of specific insights. In this phase, our focus is on assessing the potential for redevelopment particularly concerning vacant land within community redevelopment areas, CRAs. Before delving into the analysis, we first define the questions that will steer our investigation. These questions serve as the foundation for our exploration, guiding us in determining which layers of data are essential for our analysis. To enable comprehensive multi-layered and overlapping analysis, selected layers need to be processed accordingly. For example, in our specific case, 
we aim to determine the potential for redevelopment with a specific focus on vacant land within CRAs. This necessitates understanding the criteria that define optimal development sites, such as access to public parks and transportation infrastructure. By defining these questions and identifying the relevant data layers, we can conduct a targeted analysis to extract meaningful insights. Let's start by identifying vacant land in CRAs in Cape Coral. To perform this analysis, we require two layers, the CRA's boundary and the parcel's data set containing the current land use of each parcel. Please note that all these layers are included in a link provided in the description. The initial step involves extracting the parcels data set to isolate parcels within the community redevelopment areas, CRAs. We execute the extract by location tool to accomplish this, resulting in a new layer in QGIS representing all parcels in CRAs. However, we still need to determine which of these parcels are truly vacant. To achieve this, our focus shifts to filtering the parcels to extract only the vacant land. To accomplish this, we will utilize the Landu Sesdes field, which denotes land use description. Specifically, we will identify vacant parcels by searching for the term vacant within this field. After applying this filter, we will select all the filtered features and export this selection as a new layer. The outcome will be a dedicated layer containing all vacant sites within CRAs in Cape Coral. Once we've acquired our layer of vacant sites in CRAs, the subsequent step is to extract crucial statistics concerning this layer. Key metrics to assess include the total square meters of vacant land within CRAs, the number of parcels, and the average value per square meter within these areas. To retrieve this information, you can right-click here and access the Statistics panel. Here, you can explore various options to generate statistics for either the entire layer or selected features only. Additionally, you can utilize the attribute table to extract values based on multiple fields. For instance, if we aim to calculate the value per square meter using both the total area in square meters and the land value in dollars, we delve into the attribute table. Here, we perform a division operation, dividing just field, which represents the market value by the area in square meters field. This calculation yields the dollar value per square meter for each individual parcel. We can then generate key statistics on land value per square meter, providing further insights into the economic metrics of vacant land within CRAs. These key statistics offer a comprehensive understanding of the vacant land within CRAs, facilitating informed decision-making and strategic planning. To kickstart our analysis effectively, it's crucial to tailor assessment variables according to the specific needs and characteristics of the area under study. These variables serve as the foundation for evaluating the suitability of land for different types of development and land use. They are not static, but rather dynamic, evolving based on the insights derived from the existing conditions assessment and other pertinent factors. For this exercise, we've carefully selected assessment variables that align with key aspects of urban planning and development. Please note that within the description, you'll find a link to a tutorial on how to install and utilize the plugin for generating asochrones using ORS tools, similar to the ones we're about to explore. First, accessibility to major roads. By utilizing 100 meter buffers, we aim to identify areas or parcels with direct access to major roadways. This variable is essential for assessing transportation connectivity and determining the potential for various types of development, such as commercial or industrial zones. Second, proximity to parks. Parks and green spaces play a vital role in enhancing the quality of life within urban areas. To assess their accessibility, we'll generate 10-minute walking isochronies, delineating areas reachable within a reasonable walking distance. This variable helps in identifying areas suitable for residential development and promoting a healthy and active lifestyle. And third, access to public transportation. Public transportation infrastructure is crucial for ensuring mobility and accessibility for all residents. By establishing five-minute isochrones for bus stops, we can evaluate the coverage and accessibility of public transit services. 
This variable is particularly important for guiding decisions related to mixed-use development and promoting sustainable transportation options. As we delve deeper into our analysis, the criteria we've established for each land use category serve as vital guidelines in pinpointing sites with optimal development potential. These criteria are intrinsically linked to zoning regulations, which delineate the permissible types of development across different areas. However, it's crucial to recognize that these criteria aren't set in stone, rather they are adaptable and contingent upon the unique circumstances of each site. Moreover, public consultations play a pivotal role in this process, encompassing considerations such as the early impact of urban land use, provision of public services and community aspirations. So we've reached the final segment of part two of this course. Before delving into the specifics of each land use category, let's outline our approach. Our objective is to pinpoint parcels within the community redevelopment areas that hold the greatest potential for development, guided by predefined criteria. For each category, we've established specific spatial parameters to guide our assessment. For instance, in the commercial category, we'll identify vacant sites within 100 meters of major roads and within five minute isochrones from bus stops, but that are more than 2,000 square meters in surface area. This process involves conducting an overlay analysis where we scrutinize the spatial interplay between different layers to identify areas that meet multiple criteria simultaneously. To do this, we'll use the overlap analysis tool, which calculates the area and percentage coverage by which features from an input layer are overlapped by features from a selection of overlay layers. A tutorial video demonstrating how to perform this overlap analysis has been provided in the description for your reference. This analysis will highlight areas where specific criteria overlap with our vacant sites, indicating potential development opportunities. Once this analysis is completed, we'll utilize a rule-based styling approach to visually represent the results. This styling method will allow us to customize the appearance of each polygon based on the requirements, providing a clear and informative visualization of the identified development sites within the CRAs. Through this methodical process, we aim to pinpoint sites with optimal development potential and inform strategic decision-making for urban planning within the CRAs. Now, let's begin with the criteria for commercial land use. Firstly, we'll identify sites with land use categorized as either commercial professional or downtown mixed. Subsequently, we'll define parameters for the isochronies. These sites should be situated either adjacent to major roads or within 100 meters from them and must be within a five minute walking distance from bus stops. Additionally, these sites should have an area of 2000 square meters or more. To implement these filters in the rule-based styling, we'll use the expression string builder as follows. The expression FLU underscore desk equals sign commercial professional or FLU underscore desk equals sign downtown mixed is a logical condition that filters features based on their future land use description. It selects features where the future land use description is either commercial professional or downtown mixed. This condition ensures that only parcels designated for commercial or mixed use development will be included in the visualization. The condition 100 M to MR underscore area greater or equal to one filters features based on their proximity to major roads. It selects features where the area covered by the buffer zone within 100 meters of major roads is greater than or equal to one square meter. This condition ensures that only parcels located within the specified distance from major roads are included. Similarly, the condition five minutes isochronies from bus stops underscore area greater or equal to one filters features based on the proximity to bus stops. It selects features where the area covered by the five minute isochronous from bus stops is greater than or equal to one square meter. 
This condition ensures that only parcels accessible within a five minute walking distance from bus stops are included. Lastly, the condition area M2 greater or equal to 2000 filters features based on their surface area. It selects features where the area of the parcel is greater than or equal to 2000 square meters. This condition ensures that only parcels with a sufficient size for development are included in the analysis. Overall, these conditions help refine the selection of parcels based on specific criteria related to land use, proximity to infrastructure, and size, facilitating the identification of suitable development sites within the community redevelopment areas. Let's move on to multiple family residential uses. Firstly, we identify sites with a future land use categorized as multiple family residential. Then, we establish parameters for the isochrones. These sites should be either adjacent to major roads or within 100 meters from them and must be within a five minute walking distance from bus stops. Additionally, these sites should have an area of 1,000 square meters or more. Now, let's outline the criteria for single family residential uses. Firstly, we identify sites with a future land use categorized as single family residential. Then, we set parameters for the isochrones. These sites should be within a 10 minute walking distance from parks and should be either adjacent to major roads or within 100 meters from them. In conclusion, this module has provided a comprehensive overview of the process involved in identifying optimal development sites within Community Redevelopment Areas CRAs. By establishing criteria tailored to different land use categories, conducting overlay analyses, and utilizing rule-based styling in QGIS, we've been able to pinpoint sites with the greatest potential for development. Through this methodical approach, we aim to inform strategic decision-making for urban planning within CRAs, taking into account factors such as zoning regulations, proximity to transportation and amenities, and community objectives. By harnessing the power of spatial analysis and visualization tools, we're better equipped to facilitate sustainable growth and development that enhances the livability and prosperity of our communities. Welcome to part three. From QGIS to felt, online maps, collaborative and easy to share, the culminating segment of our first course. In Module 1, we embark on a journey to understand the fundamentals of online and collaborative mapping. This module serves as a primer, introducing key concepts and trends shaping the landscape of GIS technology. We explore the evolution of GIS platforms towards greater accessibility and collaboration, driven by the demand for efficient spatial data sharing and analysis. By delving into real-world examples and case studies, we uncover the significance of these advancements in various industries, particularly in urban planning. Module 2 bridges the gap between offline GIS capabilities and online collaborative mapping environments through the seamless integration of QGIS and FELT. Participants delve into the intricacies of installing and utilizing the FELT plugin within QGAs unlocking a powerful combination of robust GIS functionalities and collaborative mapping features. In Module 3, participants dive deeper into the diverse workflows enabled by FELT, uncovering its potential to revolutionize collaborative mapping in urban planning, from internal collaboration frameworks to external stakeholder engagement. Participants explore the myriad ways in which FELT facilitates seamless communication and decision-making. Through practical demonstrations and guided exercises, participants learn how to leverage FELT's intuitive mapping tools and real-time collaboration features to streamline planning processes and drive positive change in urban communities. By mastering different workflows in FELT, participants equip themselves with the skills and insights needed to navigate complex planning challenges with confidence and efficacy. In this module, we embark on a journey into the dynamic realm of GIS, exploring its evolution and the transformative impact it has on urban planning and beyond. Our exploration begins with an examination of future trends in GIS. As technology continues to advance, we witness a profound shift towards more accessible and collaborative GIS platforms. 
These platforms not only revolutionize the way spatial data is shared and analyzed, but also foster real-time collaboration among stakeholders. From architecture to environmental management, GIS technology empowers professionals to make informed decisions and drive positive change in their respective fields. Next, we delve into FELT, empowering collaborative urban planning. As we navigate through this section, we discover how FELT serves as a catalyst for collaborative mapping, enabling planners to seamlessly work together regardless of geographical boundaries. With its intuitive interface and real-time collaboration features, FELT empowers planners to unlock the full potential of collaborative urban planning. As technology continues to evolve, so does the landscape of GIS, ushering in a new era of accessibility and collaboration. This evolution is driven by the growing demand for efficient spatial data sharing and analysis across various industries. In urban planning, the transition to more accessible and collaborative GIS platforms, like FELT, is particularly significant. These platforms empower planners to seamlessly share data and collaborate in real-time, enhancing decision-making processes and project outcomes. Moreover, the shift towards online GIS platforms offers advantages such as enhanced data security and accessibility. With FELT, data is securely stored in the cloud, allowing planners to access critical information from anywhere with an internet connection without the need for cumbersome desktop installations. The evolving landscape of GIS, particularly with platforms like FELT, is characterized by increased accessibility, collaboration, and efficiency. By embracing these advancements, planners can leverage the power of GIS to address complex urban challenges and create more sustainable and resilient cities for future generations. Join us as we explore the transformative potential of online and collaborative mapping with FELT. FELT is revolutionizing the way planners work with maps online. It offers accessibility, power, and collaboration in a single platform, making it an essential tool for modern urban planning workflows. With FELT, planners can seamlessly work with a variety of data formats, including vector, raster, and spreadsheet formats. The platform supports easy importing through drag and drop or URL copy pasting. Style customization is made simple with Felt Style Editor, allowing planners to create heat, categorical color, and size range maps with just a few clicks. Felt excels in annotating maps, offering a range of drawing and annotation tools. Planners can highlight areas of interest and add annotations directly on the map, enhancing communication and collaboration among team members. Planners can dive deep into their data with FELT's filter, search, and sort options, as well as perform powerful spatial analysis using transformation tools. FELT facilitates seamless sharing and collaboration, enabling planners to work together in real time. The platform also offers programmatic access via the FELT API, allowing for integration with other tools and workflows. From individual planners to entire teams, FELT offers a collaborative environment that enhances productivity and decision-making. With its user-friendly interface and comprehensive features, FELT is the go-to solution for modern urban planning projects. Now in Module 2, we are diving into the powerful synergy between QGIS and FELT for collaborative urban planning. Traditionally, the process of sharing QGIS projects involved exporting project files and circulating them via email, a time-consuming endeavor. But the integration of QGIS and FELT, you can effortlessly share your QGIS projects online. If you haven't already installed the Add to FELT plugin, you can easily find it under Plugins, Manage and Install Plugins. Once installed, the plugin will appear in your toolbar ready for use. From there, you can choose to create a new map on FELT or add your existing layers to an existing map. Once you've made your selection, click Send to upload your project to FELT. Once your project is uploaded to FELT, you will have your QGIS project online and then you can invite your team members and stakeholders to view, comment on and edit the map using a simple link. Welcome to this last module on FELT use cases for urban planning, 
where we explore how felt facilitates both internal and external collaboration in urban planning. Felt offers a robust framework for collaboration, whether it's within your planning team or with external stakeholders. In this module, we'll delve into the tools and features that enable seamless communication, data sharing, and decision making, enhancing the planning process. First, we'll explore FELT's internal collaboration capabilities, which streamline communication and decision making within your planning team. From inviting team members as editors to collecting feedback from colleagues, FELT provides a cohesive environment for internal collaboration. Next, we'll examine how FELT facilitates external collaboration, allowing you to share maps with stakeholders outside your organization, whether it's sharing maps publicly via URLs or collaborating with external partners, FELT provides options for effective communication and engagement. FELT offers a robust set of internal collaboration tools designed to enhance communication and streamline decision-making within your planning team. In this section, we'll explore the features that enable seamless collaboration among internal stakeholders fostering a cohesive planning environment. First, you can easily invite people to collaborate on maps. Urban designers, environmental specialists, transportation experts, and others can collaborate seamlessly by inviting them as editors. This grants them access to edit maps and contribute to projects. Simply navigate to the share button and choose from various options, depending on whether you want them to be editors or just viewers who can still comment on your map. Second, collecting feedback on map work for planners is often challenging, involving sending PDFs back and forth for comments and revisions. However, with FELT, this process is simplified. Invite your colleagues to provide feedback using comments or annotations directly on your map. FELT provides different annotation tools such as text or notes, making it easy to collaborate. Additionally, you can share a project providing a base for others to work with. This allows them to duplicate the project and work on their own, further facilitating collaboration and efficiency. Moreover, FELT enables you to easily copy and paste layers, streamlining the process of transferring data between projects and enhancing workflow efficiency. External collaboration is fundamental in the realm of planning. FELT serves as a secure and intuitive platform for engaging with external partners, stakeholders, and the broader community. FELT enables planners to broaden collaboration beyond internal teams, ensuring that external stakeholders play a crucial role in the planning process. Here are a few examples. Instead of preparing lengthy presentations, your map can serve as the presentation itself. You can incorporate geospatial data, images, and even videos onto your map, allowing you to contextualize information and be more effective when working with clients. Sometimes, we need to provide intermediate outputs for clients. In these instances, you can easily share your maps with clients and request specific feedback on particular areas for discussion. You can even hold video calls with them to explain the map's contents and discuss next steps for revisions. When working on planning and urban design proposals, it's often necessary to share them with clients and the public to gather feedback. With a simple link, you can share your maps with the public, collect feedback, and download comments to analyze results. This allows you to make informed decisions based on the insights gathered from the community or other stakeholders. Moreover, with FELD, you can innovate and advance your career in web mapping. Creating web maps has become increasingly important and many professionals in the field require maps for various purposes. With FELT, you can build customized maps without needing to know any coding or similar technical skills, opening up new possibilities for your work and planning.